Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Math Office. Today's topic is going to be special right triangles. There's two parts to this video. We're going to look first at isosceles right triangles, and then we're going to take a look at 30, 60, 90 triangles. So strap yourselves in, let's do some math. What you're looking at right now is an example of an isosceles right triangle. It's a right triangle with two legs of the same length. That's what makes it an isosceles right triangle. It's also known as a 45, 45, 90 triangle, and the reason for that, if you do a little figuring out, is that these two angles right here are each 45 degrees, and then this angle is 90 degrees. So it's also named after its angle measure. The legs both have the same length. So right now I'm going to give that a value of x. We don't know exactly what that number is, but let's just give these guys a length of x. And then, in an isosceles right triangle, the hypotenuse is always going to be the length of the leg times the square root of 2. So in an isosceles right triangle, the leg and the hypotenuse is always fixed with that ratio. Let's take a look at a couple of example problems to illustrate how to use this property. For isosceles right triangles, we're going to look at two example problems. The first example is when you have an isosceles right triangle and you know the lengths of the legs. Now, you could use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of the hypotenuse, but if you use the special properties of an isosceles right triangle, you can get the answer just like that and not have to do all that work. Okay, so a moment ago we said that the hypotenuse is the square root of 2 times the length of the leg. So this is really simple. The hypotenuse is just going to be 8 times the square root of 2. And that's how you express your answer, just 8 root 2. Just put root 2 next to the number 8. And that's going to be your answer. The hypotenuse is 8 root 2. And that's that. Now let's take a look at another example problem where we kind of do the reverse process of that. Here's our other example. Now once again we have an isosceles right triangle, but this time we know the hypotenuse and we have to figure out the lengths of the legs. Now in our previous example, we had to take the lengths of the legs and multiply them by the square root of 2 to get the hypotenuse. We're going to do the opposite now. We're going to take the hypotenuse, divide by the square root of 2, and then get the lengths of the legs that way. So let's do that. Okay, so 18 divided by the square root of 2. We have to rationalize our denominator. In other words, we have to change this number so that we don't have a square root term in the denominator. We have to have a whole number down there. So here's what we're going to do to fix that. We're going to multiply this by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And then when you're multiplying two fractions together, remember, you multiply across the top and across the bottom. Okay, so we have 18 root 2 on the top. And then on the bottom, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just going to be 2. Okay. So we got 18 root 2 over 2. We can simplify this even further because 18 divided by 2 is just 9. So our answer simplified is 9 root 2. Okay, So both of these legs have a length of 9 root 2. Okay. And that's all there is to it. All right, we're looking at an example of what's called a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Uh, it gets its name just from the measures of its angles. We've got a 30 degree angle, 60 degree angle, 90 degree angle. So 30, 60, 90 triangle. There are three parts. There's the short leg, and it's always across from the 30 degree angle. There's the long leg, which is across from the 60 degree angle. And then, of course, you have the hypotenuse, which is always across from the, from the right angle, the 90 degree angle. Let's start with a short leg. Now let's give the short leg a length, we'll call it x, give it a variable. So let's say the short leg has a length of x. All right. The hypotenuse is always going to have a length that is twice the length of the short leg in a 30, 60, 90. So we'll call this 2x. Okay. And then, once again, in a 30, 60, 90, this doesn't work for any other type of triangle. The long leg is going to be the length of the short leg times the square root of 3. So we're going to write this as x root 3. Okay. So the three sides of a 30, 60, 90 always stay locked in these proportions with each other. 
Again, the hypotenuse is twice the length of the short leg, and the long leg is always root 3 times the length of the short leg. If you're just starting out with 30, 60, 90 triangles, this may sound a little confusing to you, so let's take a look through a few example problems and maybe that will illustrate this a little better for you. All right, when you're dealing with 30, 60, 90s, there are going to be three different types of problems you're going to have to solve. This is the first example. In this triangle, we know that the short leg is 8. And again, you can tell it's the short leg because it's across from the 30 degree angle. Okay, so the short leg has a length of 8. If you remember from a moment ago, we said that the hypotenuse, which is this side, is twice the length of the short leg. So to get the hypotenuse, just take 8, multiply it by 2, and you'll get 16. So the hypotenuse in this triangle has a length of 16. We also said that the long leg, which is this side right here, the long leg is the length of the short leg times the square root of 3. So in this case, we can simply write that as 8 with root 3 stuck in front of it. Okay, so the three sides of this triangle are 8, 8 root 3, and 16. That's the first example. Let's take a look at example number 2. In this example, once again we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and now we know the length of the hypotenuse to start out with. The hypotenuse is 36. What we want to do first is figure out the length of the short leg. Once we do that, we can get the length of the long leg pretty easily, doing what we did last time. So the hypotenuse, again, is twice the length of the short leg. So this time we want to take the hypotenuse and divide that by 2, and then we'll get the short leg. So the short leg is 36 divided by 2, which is 18. Okay, so in this example, the short leg has a length of 18. Now, we know the short leg, and we saw last time that if we take that and multiply it by root 3, we can get the length of the long leg. So let's just do that. 18 root 3, and that does it. So the long leg is 18 root 3, the short leg is 18, and the hypotenuse, which we started out with, is 36. All right, that's the second example. There's one more, and this one's going to be a little tricky, so follow along closely. Once again, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and this time we know the length of the long leg. All right, so we have to use that information to find the lengths of the other two sides. Now remember, previously, when we knew the length of the short leg, we had to multiply by the square root of 3 to get the length of the long leg. We're going to do the opposite now. We know the long leg. And if we divide that by the square root of 3, we'll get the length of the short leg. So let's do that right now. Short leg is 24 divided by root 3. And remember, I talked about this when we did isosceles right triangles. We have to rationalize the denominator because we cannot have a square root term down there. So we're going to multiply by root 3 over root 3 because root 3 is the thing we're trying to change. So when we multiply, again, we have to multiply across the top. 24 root 3. And if we multiply across the bottom, root 3 times root 3 is just 3. All right. We can simplify this even further, because 3 fits into 24. So 24 divided by 3 is 8. So this simplifies to 8 root 3. Okay, so that's the length of the short leg, 8 root 3. Now to get the length of the hypotenuse, we just take the short leg and we multiply that by 2. So 2 times 8 root 3 is going to equal 16 root 3. Okay. So our final solution to this problem, we started out with a long leg that had a length of 24, we got a short leg with a length of 8 root 3, and we ended up with a hypotenuse of 16 root 3. Alrighty folks, that's all the time we have for the math office today. I will see you next time.